25 Cromwell Street, the home to Fred and Rosemary West and their nine children. To anyone else, they seem like any ordinary family. However, they have committed some of the most horrific crimes in British history. I was so close to death, they could have easily killed me. To cover up his frequent burials, he pretended to do some home improvement. This is the story of Fred and Rose West. September the 29th, 1941, in Much Markle, Fred West was born. In his early life, he was described by the neighbours as a bit cheeky and a bit mouthy, but that's how the kids were these days. West was reportedly his mother's favourite child. However, there, were been, there have been reports that cast a dark shadow on the West family. Some have claimed that West was sexually abused by his mother. Fred never did well in school and dropped out to become a farm labourer. Rosemary West was born on November the 29th, 1953, in Devon. Her household was troubled and abusive. Her father sexually abused Rosemary as she was not very bright and a bit overweight. When Rosemary was 15, her mother had finally had enough of her father's abuse. She took Rosemary to live with her older daughter and her husband. Rosemary started spending even more time with male companions. Later the same year, Rosemary surprisingly moved back in with her father. Not long afterwards, she met Fred West. While Fred did several stints in jail for theft and failures to pay for his fines for previous offences, Rosemary became pregnant with his child, a girl named Heather. Fred and Rose West were married in Gloucestershire in January 1972 and their second daughter, named May, was born in June of the same year. Because of Rose's temper problems, she often treated her stepdaughters badly. In the summer of 1971, Rosemary apparently snapped and completely killed Charmaine. After severing the bodies, fingers and toes, Fred buried her under the kitchen floor. This was the start of the biggest criminal investigations. In October 1972, Fred and Rosemary West hired a young woman named Caroline Owens to work for them as a nanny for their children. They kept on making sexual advances on her, but she declined over time. I started helping out with the Wests and their children in October. They picked me up when I was hitchhiking when I was just 17. They seemed like such a lovely couple and I got along with them both really well. Little did Caroline know what this couple were really like and how she had an avoided death. Fred and Rose constantly quizzed me about my sex life, which I found very embarrassing. They would encourage my boyfriend to stay, suggesting we use their bed. And Fred would reassure me that if I ever got into trouble, he would sort me out as he knew how to carry out abortions. Rose would sidle up to me on the sofa and fiddle with my hair. That was when a lot bells started to ring. One day, Fred and Rose tied up Caroline and took her upstairs to the bedroom. Caroline suffered horrific sexual abuse from the couple. One of Fred's final threats towards me was that he was going to bury me under the paving stones of Gloucester with the hundreds of girls who were already there. I was so close to death, they could have easily killed me. Caroline made a lucky escape. However, she has struggled for years with the guilt. If I had been more determined, those lives could have been saved. Over the next six years, they killed at least eight young women who made their way to 25 Cromwell Street as lodgers or employees in their home. In the end, between Fred and Rose, they murdered a total of 12 people. These murders were so gruesome and horrific that news reporters were told to turn down their stories. The names of the women that were murdered are Charmaine West, Catherine Bernadette Brina West, Lydia Carol Goff, Carol Ann Cooper, Lucy Catherine Partington, Teresa Singenthaler, Shirley Hubbard, Junior to Marianne Mott, Shirley Ann Robinson, Alison Jane Chambers, Heather Ann West, Anne McFall, and as well as all the 12 confirmed, they believe West also killed a 15 year old named Mary Be Bestholm in 1968. But to date, nobody has been found. Fred disposed of the victims by burying them under the garden. To cover up his frequent burials, he pretended to do some home improvement. In order to afford the supplies he needed, he usually stole and fenced the loot. Even though he was often brought to the police's attention for this reason, his killings went unnoticed. The couple came close to being exposed in 1986 when Heather told her friends about the abuse she had suffered. The West were finally exposed in May 1992 when Fred videotaped himself raping one of his daughters. When she told her friends, one of them reported the West to the police. The investigating officer, Hazel Savage, had heard of Fred while he was in a relationship with Brina Costello. When another girl was raped by Fred, came forward, the police obtained a search warrant. In August, they searched the house for evidence of child abuse. Fred was arrested for rape and sodomy of minor and Rose was arrested as a accomplice. While they were being processed, their younger children were placed in care of the government. While Fred was in custody, 
Rosemary became very depressed and attempted suicide. She was saved by one of her sons. Unfortunately, the rape case fell as one of the victims backed out of the case. Meanwhile, Savage became increasingly suspicious of the West pasts. The disappearance of Heather and the results of the interviews with the West children, especially that they had been threatened to be buried under the patio like Heather. The task was simplified when Fred confessed to Heather's murder in custody, when human bones started cropping up. Fred confessed to, commit to having committed the murders alone in order to protect Rosemary. Soon enough, the bodies of Anne McFall and Charmaine West turned up as well. Seeking to protect herself, Rose cut off all contact with her husband. On December the 13th, 1994, he was charged with a total of 12 murders. On November the 22nd, 1995, Rose was found guilty of 10 murders and sentenced to life in prison, as she will never be released. Though she maintains her innocence, she announced in 2001 that she will not try to appeal her conviction. In 1996, 25 Crowell Street was completely destroyed and the site was turned into a pathway.